Hey everybody, welcome back to net.touchplus.com. Today we're going to be revisiting an older video on creating text gradients with just CSS. So we went over a method of how to do that, and the basic concept was that you used the after pseudo class to pretty much duplicate the text, and then you could use this property called WebKit Mask Image to show and hide specific parts of that second layer, and then that would reveal the bottom layer and you create your gradient. But there was one glaring problem with that is that you were mixing content and presentation, and that creates big problems. So we're going to fix that. So let's come back and let's go into our editor and I've created an index.html file. And let's just go ahead and give it some text. Hello world. All right, and now I'll go into my style sheet. And the first thing we wanna do is let's just get a, give it a background color to our body. And that's fine. And next for our H1, we'll do our initial styling and we'll say font style. I'm sorry, font size, just for our example is 100 pixels. And font family will be whatever the default sans serif font is, which will be Helvetica on my particular computer. Okay, and that looks fine. So now we're going to use CSS to create a gradient, a subtle gradient, which is really common, especially if you're given a design. And you don't want to always use background images if you don't have to. They're not selectable. They take up more space. You have to load them into a sprite. If we can, let's try to keep it with just simple CSS in HTML. All right, so the first step with this method and what we did in the previous lesson, and this is a no-no, and it's what we should not do, is we were hard coding that value in. So we did something like hello world. And what you're gonna see is when you use after, uh, by the way, technically you should use two. You can get away with one because the older browsers allowed it, so now they're kind of stuck into allowing it. But the official form is to use it that way. Anyway, so after is going to append that text immediately after it. So what we wanna do, of course, is absolutely position that text and put it over to the left. All right, we can do that. Position, absolute, left, zero. But this isn't exactly what we want in this case. Notice how it's not correct. And then if you do something up here like text line is center, it's going to be completely off, right? So the reason for this is because you're positioning it absolutely in relation to its nearest positioned ancestor. Uh, in this case, that would be the body, the window. So the way around this, of course, is to set a positioning context on the H1 tag. Now, what's interesting about this is even though we're adding content after the H1, that content will still be bound to the positioning of the H1 itself, even though, at least in your mind, it's not within it. It's still connected to it. So if I refresh now, that looks good. So we have two layers. So at this point, we're just going to play with transparency and we can use the WebKit mask image property, the CSS property to show and hide different levels of this upper layer and that will reveal the layer below it. So let's go in here and we're gonna set a color and we'll say color red and this is obviously for the example, color green below. So it will only be red for now. So let's use this WebKit mask image. And what we'll do here though, is we're gonna pass in a gradient because we don't want it to be all transparent or opaque. We wanna do different levels. So that'll be WebKit gradient. And here's where we're gonna pass in our params. Uh, the first one, what kind of gradient? Linear. Uh, direction, left top to left bottom. Pretty much saying go from the top to the bottom. And now here's where we pass in uh, what we want. So we're gonna be working with, we're using a mask here. So we're not working specifically with color, we're working with uh, visible and invisible. So we'll do from, and we're gonna do zero, 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 which is black. But then the fourth value will be the alpha transparency layer. So if we set that to zero, that means totally transparent, invisible. So it starts there. Uh, then we'll do a color stop and let's say we'll do it at 50%, but now, we wanna make it full on. So it'll be black, but mostly we're saying full on. And I'm sorry, I should wrap that as well. Okay, and then the final step is we wanna go back to transparent. So I'll just yank that and paste it in and change that to two. Okay, so let's try that out just right there. And 
immediately that's going to work in all WebKit browsers, and that's becoming an increasingly large number. You have a Chrome, you have Safari, you have the iPad, the iPod, that's a big number of people, and it's purely an enhancement. Uh, in other browsers, they'll simply see the default color, and that's okay. If it's not vital, this is something you can, of course, you don't want to do green to red, but this is a nice addition you can make. Okay, so what was the big problem with this? And it's right here. Your style sheet is now bound to your content or your markup, or more importantly, your content is dependent upon your style sheet, and that's never good. They shouldn't be connected. So to give you an idea of what I mean, if we were to go and change this to universe, it totally breaks. The content is dependent upon the presentation now because you're duplicating that text, and that's not what you should do. So in this case, if you were to change it, you'd have to come back here and change it. So now what we need to do instead here is figure out how can we dynamically fetch some value from that H1 tag. Now the way I've been doing it, and there might be a better way, but I've been using a custom attribute. So we could call this, say, data text, and we're going to repeat it. And that's because we can use an attribute selector from our style sheet. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no way from the style sheet to refer directly to the inner HTML of the element. If there is, let me know, but I'm not familiar with one. So if we set this custom attribute, we can then reference that from our style sheet. And then at this point, we would come back and say attribute data text. And now this is being fetched dynamically. So if I refresh Hello Universe, and if we were to decide to change that, all we would have to do is go back to World and we don't have to do anything from our style sheet is exactly what we want. So that is a really neat trick is to use custom attributes and then you can reference it by using this at adder function. So then at this point, you wouldn't want to do red to green. You could do something a little more subtle, like let's say we want to do a grayish color. So we'll grab that and we'll make that the base color. And then we want to have a highlight. So we'll come back and we'll set that to the highlight. And now the way, if this is confusing you right here, think of it this way. This whole layer is going to be your highlight. So when you come down to your gradient, anything that's one is the highlight that you want to show. Anything that's zero is where the bottom layer is going to show through. So at this point, we're saying at 50%, it's going to be this color. So let's save it. And now you have a very subtle gradient. Okay, now if you want to adjust this, and why don't we change this so, I just want to make sure you can see it on this resolution. And we'll choose something darker. A6. Yeah, now you can see that gradient a little bit better on that text, text gradient. So if you wanted to change this up, let's say you want the highlight to be at the very top. And you want to say, okay, I want it to be showing at the very top of the gradient, but it's going to be very subtle, so I want it to be done by the time it's at 30% and gone. If I refresh, now can you see at the very tip, you're just getting that little bit of effect. Uh, if we were to decide, if you want a better color, not a better color, but something that's more apparent, and then you wanted it to go back to one after 30%, refresh, and once again, it starts out at that color, but then by the time it gets 30%, it's showing everything that's underneath it. And then it works all the way back to red. So you can have a lot of fun with this. You can add as many color stops as you want to create your text gradients. Just make sure, keep it subtle, don't use red or green. And that's it. For more tips and tutorials, be sure to visit net.tutsplus.com. I'll see you later. I'm Jeffrey Way. Bye-bye.